Hi and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. My project for you today is super easy, super quick, and it's really cute. And it's this little tiny muslin bag. We're calling these the Santa bags. You'll be able to find them in the holiday catalog. I'm gonna give you some tips for stamping and coloring these in as we go along in today's video. They are the perfect size to hold a gift card, which is a really fun and unique way of packaging one, as well as small gifts and trinkets for your friends, family, teachers, and neighbors this holiday season. If you're here visiting from YouTube, you'll find a link in the description of this video below that will navigate you to the pictures and supplies for today's project. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started. Here's a close-up of that adorable little Santa bag. Isn't this cute? And I wanted to show you how perfectly a gift card would fit inside of here. And even room to spares. So if you want to put something else small inside of there, you certainly can. The Santa bags come in a package of eight. And you'll find them here in the Stampin' Up! Holiday Catalog on page 19. They come out to just 80 cents a piece for the package of eight at $10. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! Demonstrator and you are interested in receiving a complimentary copy of the holiday catalog or of the annual catalog, I would be more than happy to send them to you. Just leave me a comment below. Let's go ahead and just take one of these out of the packaging. You're going to find that the bag is really a nice size. They're four inches wide by five inches tall. They are a little bit opaque. You can kind of see my hand through them, so I do recommend a little bit of filler or tissue paper if you're going to put a gift card inside so it's not real noticeable. There is a really nice turned over hem seam, and you're going to find that this drawstring works really well. I've had no trouble with them coming undone once I cinch them. Make sure that your work surface is protected if you're going to stamp your bags, which is what we're going to do today. I've cut a piece of cardboard. This is a little bit thicker than regular cardboard. This was actually in the back of the Specialty Designer Series paper. And I cut it three and seven eighths by five and a quarter. And we're gonna slip that down inside the bag. Now the reason I put this inside of there is I like to make sure that I've got a nice firm surface to stamp on. And I wanna make sure that if I'm using an ink that's gonna bleed, it's not gonna go through to the back side. So I'm gonna make sure everything is nice and straight. I'm going to be stamping my images using Memento ink. I'm using this adorable string of Christmas lights, and this comes from a holiday catalog product called Making Christmas Bright. You'll find this product in the holiday catalog. It's here on page seven. The great thing about this stamp set is it also has a coordinating Christmas bulb punch to punch out those adorable light bulb images. Today we're going to be using the stamp set as it is. Keep in mind that if you want to buy the punch and the stamp set together, that's considered a bundle and it'll save you 10%. I've got my memento ink ready here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink up this photopolymer stamp, which means the photopolymer is going to pick up the color of the ink that you're using. I'm going to start here at the bottom and I'm going to create lots of firm, even pressure. Remember that this, this is fabric. It's not cardstock. So you're going to need to make sure you press firmly to get a good impression. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back and re-ink it. You do need to re-ink it every time that you stamp. Otherwise, the impression will be lighter. And on this fabric, it's going to be really difficult to see. And then what I'm going to do to create some interest is I'm going to tip this. And because, again, photopolymer, you're going to be able to see where those stamped images are going to lay. On the original one that I did, I left just space between them. And I didn't tip them as much as I am going to be doing here. So I'm going to repeat this all the way up the muslin bag. I'm bringing in four markers to color in my light bulbs. And you can choose any colors that you'd like. I did do some testing on a previous bag. And I found that the really dark markers really showed up dark on here. So you're going to want to maybe practice with a bag, maybe on the inside or on the bottom, just to get an idea of coloring. So I chose bright colors so those colors would stand out a little bit better. I have Call Me Clover, Pineapple Punch, Lovely Lipstick, and Pumpkin Pie. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be alternating these colors to fill in those light bulbs. I'm going to start with the Call Me Clover, and I am going to use the brush tip. There is a narrow tip here, and you'll be able to tell by that line here that's beneath the caps. You'll see this one's thin and this one is thick. This one is more designed for writing and signing or journaling if you're a scrapbooker or memory keeper. This one is designed more like a brush for coloring. So I'm going to come in 
inside of here and I'm just going to color in my light bulb. Because I'm using four colors, I'm going to skip. So I'm going to skip one, two, three, and I'm going to color in the next one, the fourth one, with the same color. This will ensure that I have a pattern and that I'm leaving room for the other colors that I'm selecting. I'm going to do this exact same pattern all the way across and all the way down. Now that my Call Me Clover is done, I'm going to switch over now to the pumpkin pie and I'm going to do the exact same thing by filling in the light bulb that's next to the green one. Switching over to the pineapple punch, I'm going to fill in the one next to the pumpkin pie. Now I'm going to call your attention to something. Do you see how these are empty here? I tried backtracking. It was just too much for my brain. But if you can keep a pattern of the colors, then by all means, you can start them from this way and then continue. I'm going to continue where I'm going this way and then I'll come back in and fill in. So here I'm going to add my pineapple punch. And the last color I'm going to be using is the lovely lipstick and that's going to go here next to my pineapple color. We have used all four colors, but we need to fill in this area here and this area here where we have missed. So the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is to take the green now and go backwards. So we know on this side we need another lovely lipstick. So I'm going to add one here and I'm going to do the same thing down here. And we're just going to backtrack. Next to the lovely lipstick on the left, we have the pineapple. So I'm going to work backwards. If you can keep a pattern better than I can, then have at it. You can color them all at once. And then I'll do my last one here, which is my pumpkin. It dries really quickly. So let's go ahead and pull out the cardboard. You'll see that there's no ink here, but it's just a safe haven and gives you a really nice a firm surface. This is where you would drop in your filler and your gift card, and then you're gonna cinch that closed. There's a couple ways that you can cinch this to make this stay closed. So you can create a slip knot and just pull it through. Or on this one, you'll see that I actually created a bow. To create the bow, I started all the way at the end, and then I pulled this through. And I kind of just readjusted it so that it stays close. Make sure that you've got this pulled as tightly as you want it when you go ahead and create your bow. But that's a really simple gift bag. It'll hold jewelry, it'll hold perfume, it'll hold small novelty gifts for teachers and classroom parties. And again, these are called the Santa bags. I am so glad that you joined me today, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. 